Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my talk. I will present the two-step parallel communication initialization scheme that we have recently introduced to precise coupling library. I will start with a short introduction to partition simulation with precise library. Then I will present the two-step scheme for parallel communication initialization. And I will uh, show the performance of the uh, new scheme by using an example in the field of uh, multi-physics simulation and at the end there will be a short summary. Okay, partition simulation with precise. Uh, there are generally two approaches to tackle uh, multi-physics simulation. Monolithic approach and partitioned approach. In a monolithic approach, we discretize and solve all the equations from different physics together as a single large system of equations. But in a partitioned approach, we decompose uh, the simulation domain into a smaller subdomain according to their physics and use independent solvers for each subdomain. Uh, this requires a coupling tool to actually connect different solvers to each other. We have different issues to address, the data communication between solvers, mapping of interface data if we use non-matching meshes, uh, equation coupling at the boundaries to speed up the convergence of the simulation, and time interpolation if different solvers uh, incorporate different uh, time steps. So Precise uh, is a library which is uh, capable of handling all these things very efficiently. Okay, uh, let's come to uh, initialization of the communication. Uh, the first question is, why do we need communication initialization? The reason is that uh, in partitioned approach, different solvers uh, are run by executing an independent MPI run command. This means that, for example, if you have two solvers, solver A and solver B, as you can see in this example, we execute MPI run command once for solver A and once again for solver B. MPI run command pins uh, a set of uh, MPI processors to each solver. Um, yeah, but these uh, two uh, groups of processors at the beginning are completely separated from each other. There is no communication channel between them, as you can see in this figure. Uh, the MPI ranks within the communicator of each solver are connected to each other, but uh, between the interface ranks, there, there is uh, no channel to communicate the interface data. But as we know, we need to communicate uh, interface information during the runtime. So, this is the reason why we need uh, communication initialization. We have to create these channels. And also we need to figure out uh, which uh, ranks should be connected to each other and what data must be communicated during the runtime. Uh, yeah, so as I explained, to establish uh, the inter-solver communication channels, uh, we require uh, initialization of the communication. Okay, let's see how the current scheme of the initialization works in Precise. In the current scheme, uh, we need to uh, gather the interface uh, mesh partitions into a single master rank. These are interface rank of solver B. They gather their mesh partition into, into their master rank. And the master rank of B communicates the mesh partition to the master rank of A, and from there, the receive mesh partition are scattered to other ranks. Uh, only after uh, this step, uh, each rank in the receiving part, in the receiving uh, solver, can compare its own mesh partition to the receive mesh partitions and find out uh, which information must be communicated with which rank during the runtime. But as you can see, we have uh, two main problems with the current approach. The first problem is that we have to gather all uh, mesh partitions of solver B into one single rank. 
which can require a lot of memory and sometimes it can be even prohibitive if you use a large number of uh, MPI processors for a solver or large BISH partition. Uh, the second problem is that even if we don't have this memory problem, uh, the procedure, the whole procedure is completely serial. You have to gather mesh here and send it to all the other solver and then scatter it and then the communication, the, the comparison happens and then the feedback uh, to the, uh, to the uh, sol solver B. As you can see, all these steps are have to be done one after each other. So with this approach, uh, we do not really see a nice uh, scalability behavior. So to uh, address these two issues, we have uh, introduced a new scheme which consists of two steps. Uh, in the first step, instead of uh, communicating the whole mesh partitions, we only communicate a set of bonding boxes. So what is a bonding box? Bonding box uh, simply uh, represent the spatial range of mesh partition owned by each rank. Uh, we gather these bonding boxes into the master rank and then communicate this bonding box set to the other uh, other solver and uh, ranks of these solver can compare their own bonding box with the received set of bonding boxes to figure out uh, to which rank in the solver B uh, they must communicate data during the runtime. So this is already the first step. We know that uh, what is the communication topology and we can already create channels after this uh, first step. As you can see, the amount of data we need to communicate by masters is much less compared to the current scheme. Uh, we only uh, need to communicate the se a set of bonding boxes, which are nothing but a couple of doubles, uh, depending on the dimension of the, uh, of, of the, of the mesh. Uh, but after this, we, we can already identify the required channels. Yeah, uh, it, it, this is obvious that this, uh, this first step is serial, but the amount of data which is communicated is very small, so this can happen very, very quickly. Uh, yeah, this was already the first step. In the second step, uh, after uh, that we have created the channels, uh, it is time to find out which data actually must be communicated during the runtime. So for this, uh, each rank from solver B uh, send their mesh partition directly uh, to the rank at the solver A that they are connected to each other. For example, this rank just sent it here and the, the, this, this rank sends to all other three uh, ranks of, of solver A. Um, after communicating mesh partitions, then the ranks of solver A can compare their own mesh partition to the received part mesh partition from solver B and find out uh, what are the list of data that must be communicated during the, uh, during the runtime. Uh, okay, as you can see, this, this is uh, completely parallel. The amount of data which each rank communicate is much less uh, in compared to the amount of data that a master rank have to communicate in the current scheme. And um, yeah, the mesh filtering is also parallel because each rank only compares uh, uh, the, the mesh partition directly to the connected ranks, not, not all of the, uh, or not, not, not the whole mesh partition of the other solver's interface. Uh, yeah, here we already see that uh, we can expect much better scalability behavior of, of this uh, two-level initialization scheme. So to summarize, the new method requires much less memory and the compute and communication intensive parts of uh, this scheme are done in a parallel manner. Uh, okay, uh, probably the most important question for you that how you should use it uh, but then precise. It's, it's easy because precise is completely configurable. Uh, but keep in mind that to use this parallel initializing scheme, uh, you have to uh, enable the point to point communication. The new scheme is not applicable to gather scatter uh, communication. Uh, to enable this, uh, you only need to set this use two level initialization option to true uh, in your uh, M2N 
co uh, communication configuration. And that's it, you're all set. And Precise handles uh, the rest of the things for you. Uh, we hope that in near future we makes uh, we make this initialization scheme a default option in Precise. Uh, currently, we need to do some some more tests uh, to make sure that there are no bugs and to we already have the the highest uh, performance that we can get out of this scheme. But yeah. After making sure of solving the small problems that we currently have, we will make this default. Uh, okay, let's see how this performs actually in a, in a real uh, test case. Okay, to show the uh, performance of the new of the new scheme, here I present um, an example in the field of fluid acoustic uh, interaction. Um, Okay, what is the problem here that we solve? Uh, there is a cubic domain, and there is a small uh, uh, Gaussian pulse at the center of the cube, and it spreads to the uh, outer part of the domain. Uh, yeah, uh, during the during the simulation, uh, we have decomposed the domain into two 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 uh, subdomains: the inner domain and outer domain. You can see the border between these two domains by this uh, white square here. Uh, for the inner domain, we use much finer mesh with 4.5 million elements and we solve other equation. But for the outer domain, which is larger, uh, we use a coarse mesh with 2.5 million elements and we only solve the linearized version of the other equation at, in, in this domain. Uh, the coupling in the boundaries is explicit and uh, we use nearest projection mapping as we have uh, non-matching meshes at the, at the interface. Okay, this is the beginning of the, of the simulation and this is after a couple of, couple of iterations. Okay, uh, actually to show the performance of the uh, two-level initialization scheme, I compare the initialization time for different uh, core numbers uh, for for the current scheme, which I call a serial here, and the new scheme, which is called parallel in, in this figure. Uh, we run the uh, performance uh, test on SuperMOOC NG supercomputer at the Leibniz uh, Center in, in Munich. Uh, as you can see, by increasing the number of cores, from three, almost 3,000 to 28,000. Uh, the initialization time uh, for the parallel scheme remains almost constant. But as you can see, the uh, initialization time by using the current initialization scheme just increases exponentially. And since this is a log scale, uh, you, can, you can see that the, the actually the difference uh, between the initialization time for both methods are, are very high, especially when uh, you have large number of uh, 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 MPI ranks. Okay, we do not see uh, initialization time reduction by increasing number of uh, core, uh, even for the parallel scheme. We actually did not expect this to happen because we still have the first uh, uh, step of the new scheme to, to be serial. We um, exchange the bonding boxes in a serial way, but since uh, that's only a small number of number of uh, information to be to be communicated uh, via two masters, uh, we already do not have uh, the, the the memory issue that we have for the for the current scheme, and yeah, the time is also much less. So. Uh, this is much much nicer behavior, uh, especially for a uh, large number of uh, CPU cores and for uh, large mesh partitions. Okay, to summarize, we have introduced a parallel communication initialization scheme to precise library. The memory issue that I introduced for the current uh, scheme is completely solved uh, by introducing a new scheme, and uh, we observe a much nicer uh, scalability behavior uh, of, the, of, the, of the new new scheme. 
and the communication time for large problems for large mesh partitions and for a large number of uh, MPI ranks is not uh, prohibitive uh, anymore. Uh, so with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I would be happy to answer the questions regarding what I, what I presented in the Q&A session. Thank you very much.